telescope is a time machine. That probably sounds like an absurd statement, and yet, in so many ways, it is literally true. Allow me to illustrate. What you are seeing in the image in front of you right now is the region of space around a galaxy called NGC 1272. This is not the best of images. I produced it at the Sky Story Observatory just a couple nights ago during a few brief hours that were clear of cloud cover. Unfortunately, there was an 83% full moon that night. And so, since I knew the night was going to become increasingly cloudy and I had to contend with a full moon, I shot one hour on RGB and the rest of the information on luminance. Because monochrome cameras filming on the luminance channel can capture light about twice as fast as color cameras. So with such a short amount of integration time, it was the best way to capture the deep cosmos portrayed in this image. And this image, basic as it is, is nonetheless fascinating because you are looking at a vast collection of far distant galaxies deep in the history of space-time. Everything that you see in this image is contained in a tiny region of the sky roughly the size of the full moon. And encompassed within the small area of this photograph are at least 424 cataloged galaxies, some of them up to 6.9 billion light-years away. And that distance is given in co-moving radial distance, a measure which factors in the expansion of space-time. Keep that concept of co-moving radial distance in mind because we're going to come back to it in a bit. It's very important for understanding galactic distances because how we see objects at cosmic distance is different from how they are now. Now one of the reasons it can be said that a telescope is a time machine is because when we look at things in the sky, we are looking at them as they were in the past. For example, the moon is about 384,000 kilometers away, while light travels around 300,000 kilometers per second. So it takes about one and a quarter seconds for light to travel from the moon to Earth. Thus, when we look at the moon, we are seeing the moon as it was just over a second ago. Jupiter is over 700 million kilometers from Earth. So light coming from Jupiter takes between 35 and 52 minutes to reach Earth, depending on where Earth and Jupiter are in their orbits. But that means when we look at Jupiter, we are seeing Jupiter as it was between one half and nearly an hour ago. And if we look at a star, say Polaris, the North Star, it is 447.6 light years from Earth. So when we point our telescopes at Polaris, we are seeing Polaris as it was 447.6 years ago. So when we point our telescopes toward the sky, we are literally looking at the past. In the local area of our galaxy, gravity is dominant, so space does not expand around the galaxy. And so there is a direct relationship between how far away something is and how long back in time we are looking at it. If a star, such as Alpha Centauri, is just over four light years away, we see it as it was just over four years ago. And even if we look at the globular star clusters, like many galaxies which orbit our galaxy but several thousand light years out, we are seeing them as they were several thousand years ago. But if we get far out into intergalactic space, far away from the strong influence of gravity, by the way there's no escaping gravity, it's just much weaker deep in intergalactic space. At such ranges, space expands. I'm not a physicist, and I will not attempt to go into the complex physics of why. But in essence, dark energy becomes stronger than the influence of gravity, and dark energy pushes space to expand. The mechanism by which this happens is not well understood, but it's not as if space stretches. Space simply keeps on expanding and expanding, filled in with, fundamentally, more space. It doesn't expand by much, even over a large distance. However, the distances between galaxies are vast, truly vast, as in the distance to the closest galaxy, Andromeda, is over two and a half million light years. And as you can see in this image here, it's very easy for any astronomer or astrophotographer with a telescope to image galaxies billions and billions of light years away. Now, out there in the depths of intergalactic space, space may expand at the rate of 73.3 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A parsec is 3.26 light years and a megaparsec is 3.26 million light years. This speed of expansion adds up, so for every megaparsec of additional distance, space expands an additional 73.3 kilometers per second. So, every megaparsec that you look deeper into intergalactic space, you have to add another 73.3 kilometers per second of expansion to the equation. Now, given that a megaparsec is 3.26 million light years, a truly vast distance, as there are some 9.5 trillion kilometers per light year. This additional rate of expansion of 73.3 kilometers per second 
would seem trivial, but it adds up fast across the vastness of the cosmos. Imagine this blue rectangular form portrays the length of a megaparsec. Even though it is expanding at the rate of 73.3 kilometers per second, given the incredible size of a million parsecs, that expansion is invisible unless we greatly accelerate time. If I were to accelerate time at, say, a million years per second, it might look something like this. Even at a million years per second, the expansion is pretty slow, right? But what happens if we start adding more parsecs of distance? We'll add one now, and another, and another. The speed is cumulative, so the further away we go, the faster is the expansion of space-time. In each individual megaparsec, the expansion is only 73.3 kilometers per second, but two megaparsecs away, it's doubled that, 146.6 parsecs per second. And at three megaparsecs away, the rate of expansion has tripled at 219.9 kilometers per second. And at four megaparsecs away, the expansion rate has quadrupled at 293.2 kilometers per second. And for every additional megaparsec of distance, another 73.3 kilometers per second of acceleration is added. Now let's go back to my original image of the region around galaxy NGC 1272. There are 424 extremely distant galaxies in this image. And as noted earlier, some of them are in the range of 6.9 billion light years away. And 6.9 billion light years is the equivalent of 2,116 megaparsecs. Multiply that times 73.3, and we see those most distant galaxies are receding from Earth due to space-time expansion at 155,100 kilometers per second. So expansion at 6.9 billion light years away is half the speed of light. And on top of that, they have been racing away from us since the dawn of time. Those galaxies were much closer at the time that their light originated. But, over billions of years as space-time expanded, distances added up. But we see the galaxies as they looked when their light started toward us 6.9 billion years ago. But in the present, those galaxies are actually much further away. I find it's useful to think of it like this. Imagine space-time is like a conveyor belt, and it's carrying both matter and energy along with it. For any light emitted by an object being carried by that space-time to reach an observer, it must not only cross the proper distance between the object and the observer, but the additional distance added by the conveyor belt going the other way. What this means is that when we look at objects across the vast depths of intergalactic space, we see them as they were and where they were long ago. But due to the expansion of space-time, they are actually further away in the present, and who knows how they may have changed over time. Now earlier, I said to remember the concept of co-moving radial distance. Co-moving radial distance takes that expansion of space-time into account and thus reports how far the object is actually away, not how far it appears at the time that we image it. And because space-time expands, and because that expansion is faster the further away something is, light traveling to us across intergalactic distances will have had to cover more light years, perhaps far more light years, than were between the object and us at the moment of the light's emission. If you want to study this deeper, there's a very good article to be found at the Royal Astronomy Society of Canada's website, and I'll provide a link in the description. This expansion of space-time is why cosmologists can calculate the age of the cosmos to be roughly 14 billion years, and yet find objects 30 and 40 billion light-years away. In fact, the visible cosmos at this time is calculated to be over 93 billion light years across. It may well be much larger, we have no way to know, but that's a topic for another video. But the fact that the universe is far larger in light years than it is old in years is accounted for by the expansion of space-time. The cosmic speed limit, the speed of light, only applies to matter and energy. Space-time itself can expand much faster. And as it expands, it carries both the matter and the energy within it along for the ride. But what all this means is that, in every sense of the word, a telescope is in fact a time machine. Whatever we look at, we are actually seeing it in the past. The moons and planets in our solar system, we see them as they were seconds to hours ago. The stars and globular clusters of our galaxy, we see them as they were years to millennia ago. And the galaxies, like the region of NGC 1272 shown here, we see them as they were hundreds of millions to billions of years ago. Knowing that, due to the expansion of space-time, they are much further away than they now appear to us. And the further off we look into the depths of space, the further back in time we peer.